Stuff Ready? for science. Yep. Wow! Oh, <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> what we do is we take that same mixture and we put it into a bottle with uh, about four pebbles and I gently lob it uh, to show how sensitive the mixture is and to show that you don't want to be messing with this mixture too much. It made the bottle rapidly disassemble. If you drop it, it could lead to a, an unpleasant day, you might say. So I don't use potassium chlorate except for in demonstrations about why you shouldn't really use potassium chlorate. You'll find recipes for it. They talk about how powerful it is, but nearly everything you can do with potassium chlorate, you can do with potassium perchlorate, and you'll get a safer, more stable mixture with a perchlorate as opposed to the chlorate. And it's just about as powerful. It's not always a one-for-one -one replacement. It's usually a similar recipe that you can use so that you don't have to use potassium chlorate. Uh, if you see a recipe for white gunpowder from the 1800s and it has potassium chlorate and uh, I think it had prussiate of potash, which is potassium ferrocyanide, I think. And I wouldn't make that white gunpowder either with the potassium ferrocyanide. I just, I don't like to make anything with cyanide in it, you know, just arsenic, cyanide. They're good things to stay away from, seeing as how they're poisonous and all. You know, there's plenty of ways to make things go boom without having to deal with arsenic and cyanide. There's there's no need to use those recipes, you know. Chlorates, potassium chlorate, and especially barium chlorate, that one's even worse. I've never even bought that stuff. So I've heard it's real unsafe. From what I've read, it's real unsafe to use. I've heard it is real pretty green, though, like a green blue flame or something like that. You might get a real pretty color out of it. I don't keep it around. Some of the safety considerations with chlorates are that you don't want to mix it with sulfur. That makes it less stable, more sensitive to percussion being hit with stuff. Sulfuric acid uh, can set it off. Powdered metals can set it off. Glycerin, I think, if I remember right, can set it off. Glycerin might include something like uh, sugar water. Potassium permanganate can be ignited with glycerin. I actually done that in a video where I ignited the ammonium dichromate volcano reaction with a little pile of potassium permanganate, and I just poured a little glycerin on top of it to get it going. And I have also ignited with potassium permanganate with sugar water. It doesn't have to just be glycerin. I avoid potassium chlorate. Uh, because it can become so sensitive. A good test for sensitivity is how hard do I got to hit a tiny bit of it with a hammer uh, to make it go off. Be really careful doing this. You'll be surprised how small of an amount you need to smack with a hammer to make a ginormous noise. It's less than an eighth of a teaspoon, like a sixteenth of a teaspoon or less and you, you're going to get a good bang. It's really surprising because it's a lot louder than if you just lit the same amount off with a match. If you light it off with a match you get a little poof, but you smack it with a hammer and there's a loud percussion. And one other thing, if you decide you want to try that demonstration to show the sensitivity of potassium chlorate, well I forgot to wear uh, safety goggles and a face mask, which I probably should have worn since that was really sensitive stuff. But when you toss it, um, don't don't jerk your hand when you throw it. You know, like don't suddenly and rapidly accelerate it, because that could make it blow up right in your hand. You gently lob it if you're gonna try that demonstration. But I don't recommend it because uh, it's very sensitive stuff. Uh, potassium chlorate and then once you add the sulfur to it it becomes very touchy don't put potassium chlorate mixed with other stuff 
into a mortar and pestle and grind it when it's mixed with anything. You know, if you have to make it a finer powder, do it when it's all by its lonesome. Uh, do not grind it when it's mixed with anything. Don't store it overnight. Just mix up the amount that you're going to use right at that moment, that day, and then use it. Don't store it when it's mixed with other stuff. For storage, just store it all by its lonesome. Just store it all alone as a 100% pure oxidizer. Also, it can absorb moisture out of the air. So if it's mixed with something and you live in a humid region and it's mixed with, let's say, some sulfur and then some moisture gets absorbed out of the air it, with the sulfur that's in the mixture, it could make some sulfuric acid and then lead to spontaneous detonation or spontaneous deflagration or spontaneous ignition or whatever the proper term is for it. Whoa! Oh, <laughs>